talk about any pregnancy updates, things you're doing for this birth. And by the time this episode's air, you'll already have had the little one, which is so beautiful and precious. But for, you know, catching everyone up, any specifics on birthing plan, what pregnancy was like this time around, differences between Teddy's pregnancy and then the next one's pregnancy, like how is everything going there? Yeah. So I feel so lucky to have discovered the bean protocol before going into just to catch people up. I have a whole fertility episode. We can link that below and you can hear my fertility journey. It took us five years to finally get pregnant. I was really opposed just again, how sensitive my body is to doing IVF. And then I discovered the bean protocol through unique Hammond. We have a wonderful episode with her as well as the founder, Karen Hurd. We have a great episode on that. And that really put me in a healthy state and made me intuitively confident about doing IVF because I knew I could detoxify those hormones out of my body quite quickly after. I was a very successful round of IVF. We got incredible amount of embryos. It was like high COVID. I started it like right at the top of COVID. So we actually couldn't transfer for months. I wanted an Aquarius, but we ended up transferring for an Aries, which I'm so grateful. Like we talked about in surrendering that it was a great thing. So my pregnancy with Teddy was so easy. The first trimester is always really hard for me. It was hard with Teddy, you know, it was really nauseous and tired, the norm. But after that, complete smooth sailing. And I've, I did bean protocol the entire pregnancy, postpartum, and have continued into my, this experience. And so not only was the pregnancy completely easy on my body, and I do really think it, it had to do with the bean protocol because I'm you're detoxifying everything out of your body, but pulling all of this excess hormones that you're carrying in pregnancy. Mm. And so the birth, I don't think I ever really shared it on a podcast, but with Teddy, I like to share this with friends. Anytime friends get pregnant, because while I was pregnant, I was practicing a tremendous amount of mind over matter for the birth. Mm. And it was so hard for me to find truly positive birth stories anywhere. And people want to really share their traumatic birth stories, which I totally have so much compassion for and holding space for it because we each have our own journey. But I was like, I'm going to be programming like unbelievable birth stories during this process. And it really paid off. So I felt like Topanga was too far for me for my first birth to have a home birth. And so I have the most like kick-ass doctor. He's like an old school, super loved doctor, Dr. Paul Crane. You had seen him probably on the Kardashians if you ever watched that. He's who birthed North and everyone else in the world. (laughs) And he's like a mad scientist, but he's basically like an old midwife. He will do home births for you. And so I went with him over the midwives I had met with because I'm big wussy pants and I knew the probability of me transferring was probably pretty high. And I'm like, why am I paying for a midwife and a doctor if I could transfer? And then I have my amazing doula that I'm using this time around too, Patty of Uma Mama. And so the birth, what he suggested, he said, just get a suite at this really fancy hotel that's three blocks from Cedars and do it there. Like if Topanga feels far for you, we can do it there. And that's exactly what we did. We rolled up. He did a membrane sweep on me that day because she was so low and my cervix was opening and it was like a week over. He didn't care about the week over. He just was like, let's try it. You feel like you're there. So he did a membrane sweep and I had listened to Mandy Moore's birth on, on a podcast that we, we all share the same chiropractor. And she like got to take a nap and go to bed. And this was at 4 PM. I did the membrane sweep and I pulled up to Topanga at 6 PM. That was in Beverly Hills and my water broke. And I was like, Oh, here we go. Okay. We're going in for yeah. this. <laughs> and so we show up at this like fancy hotel pretending like we're just staying for the night. (laughs) I'm like so pregnant, having contractions, carrying a birthing ball. Like (laughs) it's ridiculous. Isn't it like super common though, this hotel that they like do that? Like they know like this floor is like- I wonder if they're- they're in on it because I know his yeah. patients do it there a lot if you're yeah. a, like a deep West Sider. <laughs> so I'm curious how into it they are, but it's hilarious because he's coming back and forth from Cedars because he has another person having a birth at Cedars. And then my my doula came in and out a few t- and it's like looking like we're just doing drugs in there really like they're coming <laughs> in the middle of the night, you know, like bringing stuff. And so my birth was 
everything I had practiced mind over matter. It progressed quickly, easily. It probably would have been a 12 hour birth, but right when I was transitioning at seven and eight, I had this moment that I got out of the shower. I had been in the shower for two hours and it was so soothing to be in the shower. I was over a birthing ball and I had this moment where I was like, I'm doing this out of ego. This isn't my authentic self. This isn't our birth story. And I don't fucking want to be doing this anymore. And I'm somebody who doesn't have a GP. I haven't had an antibiotic. Like I don't even have doctors. I'm that kind of person. But there was something so soothing to me and curious about me, like wanting to transfer and go get an epidural. I was like, I want to do that. Like I actually rebellious Aquarian that there's some, and she was doing fine. Like during the whole Teddy, during the whole birth that I was like, I know it's going to be totally fine. It's the only toxic thing we will have done throughout this pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And so we transferred and that slowed it down a tiny bit, but overall it was a 16 hour birth vaginal, no tearing. So I like to share that a lot with friends or anybody because I know for me it was really hard to find positive birth stories. And I just really want to share with people that everyone has their own experience and some people have extremely traumatic experiences. And I really want to honor that too because I've had friends who have had just absolutely traumatic births and there's nothing more violating painful, hard to recover from. But I also think there's a world where it's really important to share really positive birth stories because Mm -hmm. that, that also gives a lot of expansion to people. So it was an incredibly fast birth, probably would have been 12 hours without an epidural, very straightforward. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, she came right out. And then of course, another resource in LA is that we use the pediatrician, Dr. Jay Gordon. He actually has a service where he'll come and sign you out of the hospital. So you never have to go into out of labor. You you can go into, you know, yeah. So we left after three hours. So it was like the perfect home birth where you got a little bit of an epidural and then got to take a nap, have a baby and then go home. So it was really (laughs) nice. I think it's so powerful that you shared also about the epidural, because I think a lot of people in the wellness world are so afraid of it. But I think that's the power of listening to your body and your intuition. Like your body knows what your body can handle and what's right for you. And don't feel like there's any one way that you absolutely should do the epidural or you absolutely shouldn't, or it should, your birth should look that way or this way. Like you get to design it however you want, however your body feels good. And you were listening so intently in that moment. Like, okay, yeah, I didn't want it. But then in that moment, no, this is silly. I'm going to do this. This feels right. Allow yourself to make that shift and change. I think that gives so much licensing for everyone to listen to their own internal voice when it comes to their body. I couldn't agree more. The thing that I've learned the most probably through this process, and that will inform what I have to say about this next birth, and this is something I learned so early on when I got pregnant with Teddy because I understood it so well, having such trouble getting pregnant. It's really their journey. It's really their story. And I was in full surrender to whatever that looked like. I have a doctor that has the lowest cesarean rate in all of Los Angeles. So if she's someone who had to come through as a cesarean, I trusted him on that. I trusted it because he works really hard to, to not have to have an unnecessary intervention like that. And I just was really in surrender about however she wanted to come through rather than I know a lot of people go into it with a really focused plan. I was like, the plan's out the window, but it's really whatever's in the moment. And I was in true surrender to that. And I'm in the same with this baby. And so to wrap this up, this pregnancy, it was really hard for the first trimester for me, harder than with Teddy, because in this one, I had depression during it, Mm -hmm. hormonal depression. I stopped being active on Instagram. Like I just couldn't function during that time. I was so sick and stuff. So I think it definitely started setting the tone for, okay, this is his journey. I'm going to surrender into it. And just for context for people who are like, you had to do IVF the first time. So I did end up getting pregnant last year in October, naturally, unexpected, because I didn't think I could. And it was really shocking for me. I was not ready for it at all. And I felt so scared. And I just, I felt like my time with Teddy alone wasn't done. And I had this moment, and this is a trigger warning for people, as someone who's experienced many, many losses, I had this moment where I communicated with the baby and I the spirit baby. And I just said, look, if this is your time and you have to come through, we will figure this out. Absolutely. But it would be 
so much more harmonious for all of us if we could just come back again later. And I had a really peaceful miscarriage. We were actually traveling in New York at the time, and I such a trigger warning, but I just was so relieved and grateful, and it was so peaceful and such an easy pass. I've had many miscarriages in the past trying to conceive. It's something I'm used, used to. <laughs> like, I just knew how to navigate it. And then we did try, when I was ready to get pregnant, naturally quite a few times, like for quite a while, and it wasn't happening and I did end up transferring this embryo and choosing a boy which was fascinating because every psychic baby reader communicator everyone was saying it's a girl spirit and I was like I would love to be a girl mom I just love being a girl mom I was an only child for 13 years I understand that experience a lot but when I would go to sleep at night and talk to the baby spirit, I would say, you tell me, what do you want to be? And it always mm -hmm. was presenting boy. And whatever that ends up being, of course, that doesn't mean anything. But mm -hmm. that was the gender of the embryo it was choosing. And so, again, I listened to myself on that. And I said, okay, it's your choice. It's your thing. So we chose a boy. And so far, the pregnancy has been tr so easy after the second trimester being protocol again, I think it's just my body, or maybe it's that I'm Irish. I don't know <laughs> what it is, but it's it's very simple. Like I don't have the body aches, I don't have the constipation or the whatever. But I, again, I wonder what that would be like if I weren't on the beam protocol. And then mm -hmm. we do anticipate to do the same sort of birth plan again if he's positioned correctly and everything. But I think. Teddy's never had a night away from me. We co-sleep still. So I think I would be a little bit more motivated to not transfer this time just to be with her, like have her around. So her and I are starting to watch animal birthing videos and then we're starting to watch birthing videos and talking to her. Do you want to be here? Because her grandmother will be in town and be her point person. And she's going through a humongous phase right now of like deep attachment to me even though I don't think she's aware that it's because of the baby, because we've been talking about the baby and reading books since the day I got pregnant. She's actually really excited about it, but I think subconsciously she's, because she's rejecting Max, she's rejecting everybody else, like so attached to me, pushing boundaries, just really feeling that transition that's coming. So yeah, I'm really curious to see how this goes. And we were driving yesterday because she'll only car nap. <laughs> so we're driving and I had this moment where I was like, if he's positioned well and all is well, maybe we do just try in Topanga based on my last birth experience. So who knows what's going what's gonna to happen. But yeah, that wraps up oh. a really long-winded thing. I'm, I'm so glad you shared it because we get that question a lot about what your birthing story was like. And I think having examples of what that play-by-play -play looks like, having expansion for other people, how to advocate for yourself and be able to understand what you need and what your needs are for the baby. And I also love the reframe of I'm not the one in control here. It's however this baby wants to come through. And I need to trust that they're showing me how they want to come through by listening to what's happening moment to moment, I think can give a lot of mothers a lot of peace and surrender in that process too. Thank you. And I do want to acknowledge like my birthing experience is like unbelievably privileged. Like most people don't have access to everything that I just talked about. And it's really interesting because I always share about this, but when I taught at a preschool at 27, before I launched this work, I was so broke and I had this moment and this communication with the universe because I, before being a preschool teacher, never really wanted to be a mom. I hadn't had that desire. I was never the person who like dreamt about my wedding or anything. And I started to have that connection and that desire at the preschool. And I have such a vivid moment of standing there talking to the universe because it was a West Side preschool where everybody had access and privilege and mm -hmm. they could really provide their children with such a different experience than how I was raised. And I said, universe, if I meant to have children one day, I have to have this level of, of privilege to provide a very different experience than what I had growing up with two young 20-year-old broke parents. And I remember that, like that was my contract with the universe mm -hmm. so clearly. And I have gone on to manifest it. It was very much me casting my list in that moment. So I just want to express that if somebody's obviously not in the privilege and the position that I'm in on 
every level, as a white woman especially, it's just advocate for yourself and do your research. And I'm sure there are angels like that and resources out there that can help you help facilitate the experience that you desire. I think it's really interesting that process and allowing others and your birthing team to take care of you in that yeah. moment. Cause I think there's sort of this beautiful reparenting ability in those moments too, where it's like you allow yourself to surrender, you allow everyone to take care of you. And then it's like that portal right before then you take care of the new soul. It's kind of like yeah. a cool evolution in that moment too. And there's just so many more resources today. I feel like that people yeah. are getting jewels or support here. Or there's people get more people getting educated in it so they can support others in it. So you don't have to solely rely on the medical system. Absolutely. And that's what we all did in the past before there was allopathic medicine. We had the midwives in the village and the sisters and the aunts and stuff. And it's really cool that even versus the nineties, how much more prevalent our society is starting to provide that experience. A thousand percent. <laughs>